So how many people do you employ? We employ 26 people. How did you guys meet? I don't even know that story. I was in the restaurant business you know, 20 years ago, and uh, I had sold my restaurant, and I knew Rick was in his business, and he asked me to come on board as a sales guy. And at the time, they were doing refurb and resale, and I noticed that uh, there was equipment that was left over from the refurb, and I asked him what he was doing with it. And there were some solutions to it, but they weren't quite the right solutions. So uh, we decided to put a plan together to create a machine that would crush and sort and so we could get the commodities out of it to resell as a commodity or a reused or a recycled product. And when was that? When did you start? Jeffrey came on, I think, 1996. I started this around uh, 1994. And what were you doing before you started this? I worked for Euler Packard. Yeah. Um, I was in this type of business. Euler Packard had started uh, Sanford and Son, which was a division in, uh, for recycling. They were one of the first ones to do it, and I happened to be involved in that, and I found it very intriguing that there was a, a, a market for this recyclable product. And I, I was grew up in the car business with my family, and I always wanted a, a junkyard. But, uh, it was not going to happen because they're too expensive. So uh, it intrigued me that this was a type of junkyard for electronics and aluminums and coppers and and uh, just started playing with that and it just took off from there. And you started out by reselling? That was Yeah, reselling. Yeah. We, we would test every single piece. We would sell every connector and chip and anything we could make ends meet, you know, because uh, starting out in the business is a little scary. but. Uh, we made it happen. We squeezed every penny out of it that we could. Yeah. <laughs> and so, did you guys know each other from before? We've been, yes. we've been friends all our life. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that we would, we would recycle, or what we called in those days recycling, was anything that was uh, broken, that came in like if a printer was broken, yeah. we would take the plastic off and cut the wire off, and, uh, yeah. but in a very, very small way, you know. Like in 94, there was digital up in Kentucky and yes. nobody else, right? I mean, there, there was, was um, there was Honeywell and Lawrence, uh, digital, uh, Hewlett Packard. There was some pretty good sized players, but we we used to focus on the, um, the smaller companies, and we used to only deal with resellers at that time because we were starting out, so we, we weren't big enough to get into the, the big places. So we, uh, I would just go shopping at places like Mayan now, you know, so, and uh, whatever we could find that they would sell us, we would try to resell it. And so that's really where the name came from, AC, yes. the brokers Yes, part, because, because at the time too, we also were doing brokering, so we would buy, let's say, uh, 10,000 floppy drives at the time, which is, and uh, we'd sell them and make, you know, 10 cents a piece. And yeah. We were almost like a stockbroker, but just for commodities. Yeah. Um, but the, after a while, the direction uh, it wasn't the direction that I wanted to go in at that time. So it was very difficult to switch back over to recycling, um, but we did it. We had to change uh, a lot of manpower to, uh, uh, to get them acclimated to the, to the new regime. And uh, most of these guys have been with us now for over 10 years, so they've been right through the change with us. Yeah. And does it ever, I've always wondered this, just the name, having the name broker mm -hmm. in the middle of your name, do you think that hurts with like all the R2 stuff because people think broker Yeah, I mean, sell? you know, the, the name is maybe dated now. Maybe there should be a spin-off division for the recycling, the R2. Um, maybe ACD recycling, I, I'm not sure yet. You know, just uh, people know what we do but new customers may be getting thrown off by the name. Not really sure exactly how you get the word broker in there. You know? I mean, so there are there are products that we do broker out because we're a commodity. Really, in the end, we're a commodity seller. Yeah. You know, so that market is really a brokering market. Yeah. I, I do agree that, but we sometimes go under the mantle ACB recovery too, which is uh, a little bit of a different tone. Yeah. You know? uh, but I agree that you know, the broker part of it, but we've always kept it because most of our customers. Our database is just based that way. Yeah. So, and about 19, I don't know, 98, IRN came in, and Dana and I believe you. Yeah. And we had a meeting in uh, at Hilldale mm -hmm. in April, and uh, we talked about going into the colleges and doing, doing recycling and 
that's when we really kind of shifted over into the recycling part of it because at that time you guys were looking to go into institutions or colleges and they were looking for an avenue out. Yeah. That's, that's when we started to really focus on that end of it and that's when the machine started coming in. And I believe they brought Rob Grogan in for a tour and uh, I had showed him the plans, my hand-drawn plans of the machine and then I actually the next time he came in I had him, uh, we had him done by an engineer yeah, yeah. and uh, he was really getting interested in what we were doing. Yeah. So which kind of boosted our I don't know, uh, interest into kind of going into it, you know, and seeing what we could do with it. I mean, we actually used our own money to produce it, you know. We actually turned the screws into nuts on it ourselves. But did you have an off-the-shelf shredder first? Or no, no, this was your first machine. You know, we it, it was quite difficult to, to build this thing because, first of all, we had no customers that were even interested in using us for this at this time. And, uh, you know, we've always been like, whatever. Build it and they will come. And we dumped a lot of money in this thing hoping and made this beautiful, shiny machine. We're <laughs> like, all right, now what? But as soon as um, we started shredding with it, it really it changed the focus. Yeah, it changed the whole focus. And what do you mean it changed the focus? Because before that, you'd been doing all hand dismantling. Correct. Yeah, but we knew at that point, too. You, you got to understand, back then, um, there were still black and white monitors, printers, there was hardly any desk jet printers, it was more, you know, the older dot matrix printers, um, and there just wasn't that much of this recyclable electronics out. And as, as things started changing and they started, you know, pondering with the, with the LCDs and new laser jets and then the printers got cheaper, we knew that there was going to be a lot of this stuff coming out over, in the future. And uh, it, that's what we did, we just went after the volume. I mean, you know, to manually dismantle some of this stuff and not get the product that you need to make the money back on was was an issue. You know, most of these commodities are, are fuel driven or they're driven by the stock market or whatever's out there, the forces, the economic forces that are out there. And so you have to really consider how much it's costing you to dismantle by hand, whereas mechanism cuts down on all the labor. Right. So we went we went from, you know, forty guys dismantling down to running a machine with three. You know, so, and we were putting a lot more product through. So what we did after that was we went after volume. So we were going after printers, we were going after product that we could run through the machine to get the commodities out so we could sell. But you still hand dismantle all the PCs, <coughs> and now you're back to hand dismantling all the monitors. That's correct, yes. because what happened was the machine was was taking care of the TVs at the time, and we were producing uh, two and a half, three inch collets, which are now a cost going out, whereas the tubes are a less a lesser cost for us to grow. So and we're not seeing as many monitors as we once were. So where's your glass going now? It goes to uh, COM3 in Chicago. In Chicago. Right. So it goes what do you ship tractor trailer? Though? Yeah, tractor yeah. trailer. Yeah. I mean we were originally using uh, TDM in uh, Baja, California. And we still send them product. It's just that our window is closed. They they only take a certain amount because they get inundated with glass from all over here. And what do you do with the, the flat screens? And do you like, is there a difference? I have no clue. Is there like a difference between an LCD and a plasma? And I don't know whether technology Not the plasma, but the LCDs, you know, contain mercury as a monitor it contains lead. Um, the LCDs will, will send them down to uh, a lead, I'm sorry, a mercury company that will take out the fluorescent bulbs for us and send them back. And then, then they're safe to shred. Really? Yeah. So they pull them apart? Yes. That's why LCDs are going to be a real problem in the future. Real problem and very expensive to handle. And so PCs you take apart by hand? Yeah, because the machine is um, it's very good with um, printers and fax machines and copiers, that kind of stuff. With metal products, it, it, it just binds them up and it commingles the metals with copper and stuff and we can't get it out. So it's just, by the time we separate it, it's just easier for us to dismantle it and do it that way and let the big volumes go through the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Does anything that comes in here as like a whole piece go out of here as a whole piece or do you not PCs? Everything? No. Yeah. No. No. yeah. Yeah. And nothing goes, so everything goes out as a commodity. Yes. And then who's your downstream markets? For well, I mean, you've got your plastics, you've got non-ferrous, the, pl the plastics will go out to different uh, companies. Um, that, that's driven by the market. 
it's, it's a very weird market plastic, um, but you know, the metals will stay local uh, to Whitfield Alloy. Um, they'll handle all the metals for us, they'll handle all our air conditioners, uh, batteries, um, transformers, any, any of that type of product. Um, circuit boards go to a couple of different people all within the United States. Um, recently we just spoke with uh, uh, CR Electronics in uh, Seabrook, New Hampshire, and um, they are sending their circuit boards to either uh, Noranda or Germany and uh, the container loads. And get, they're uh, going through the R2 certification as we speak also. So everyone we deal with now is either going through the R2 certification or, or is R2 certified. Coincidentally, you know, it yeah. just, just happened that way, but it seems like that's where everybody's going. So. Yeah. yeah, in the day there was a lot of money. Um, it's, it's very tempting to do it, obviously. But Jeff and I and our guys move pretty slow. We, we, we don't just react. So we knew that there was going to be uh, repercussions for this. Been doing this too long to, to jeopardize any, any of our uh, uh, business relationships. And um, yes, people have passed us in this business, and now they're out of business. So we're, we're the turtle. We're the tortoise. We're the slow, slow growers, but we're solid, and we're solid because we're on the straight route. And that's the quite honest, simple answer. <laughs>